everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys, for more Barca news coming your way as we build up to the return of club football again. Because today we're going to be talking about the likes of Ferran Torres, about Ilgai Gundogan, Robert Lewandowski, and also Erling Haaland. Yes, I did say Erling Haaland. There's lots to come, lots to discuss and debate. So come on and let's do it. But first up, if we do indeed begin with some news ahead of the upcoming Classico next month there on October the 29th at the Olympic Stadium between Barcelona and Real Madrid because it has been revealed once again here in the media that Barca will wear a special shirt in cooperation with Spotify of course following on from Drake's logo appearing in the Classico on the front of the shirt we also had Rosalia didn't we last season and in the first Classico of the season this time around we are apparently going to see the iconic role Rolling Stones logo displayed on the front of the bar shirt. I'm just wondering here, you can see a few mock-ups of what that may look like. What do you think, guys, about the Rolling Stones logo on the front? Are there any Rolling Stones fans here? Let me know your thoughts on that down below. But of course, the most important thing is going to be getting the win in that game. And if we do indeed talk about some of the players who were in action last night, Gavi started for Spain there and also scored the opening goal against Georgia. And all of that whilst wearing a scrum cap on his head. That was, of course, to protect his ear after the really painful hit that he received against Osasuna just before the international break. But good to see Gavi there getting amongst the goals. And there was also a start for young Lamine Yamal. It didn't take him long, did it, to earn a place in the Spanish national team starting lineup. And he very nearly scored in back-to-back -back games here. He cuts inside. He loves to do that, doesn't he? On that left foot, wonderful hit at goal. Whipping effort there towards the top corner. And it cannons off the woodwork. So, so unlucky. Would have been an incredible goal from Yamal and yet more good signs from him. Then you had Balde and Ferran Torres coming off the bench for the final half an hour of the game. And just like at Barca, just in the same way that we've seen the kind of attitude from Ferran, he came on with a real point to prove. He wanted to show what he could do and that's exactly what he did once again. He scored twice there in the space of 10 minutes against Georgia and that means right now that in official competitions so far this season, Ferran Torres has four goals in just 85 minutes of football. And that right there is an incredible stat. Four goals in 85 minutes. And my big question to you right now, guys, is how is Ferran, though, going to break into Xavi's team? What is it going to take? Where can he fit in order to get regular minutes from the start of games there? Because obviously you've got Lamine Yamal, who's been so impressive on the right-hand side. And we know he can't play every single game. There might be an opening there. You've got Lewandowski down the middle. You've got Gavi, who's being used off to the left and also of course now the arrival too of Jao Felix so where can Ferran Torres fit in? How can he break into that Xavi lineup? And of course the chances will come when we rotate our team but do you feel like right now Ferran is kind of the ultimate 12th man of this team? You know he's not quite in that starting lineup should he be or is he more effective coming off the bench? Because so many times so far this season we've seen him come on, we've seen him change games have an impact and can that be his role? coming on and doing that on a regular basis or does he deserve something more permanent in this team do let me know that in the comments down below and on the topic there of the international break and some of the games that have been going on because there was real concern last night guys wasn't there over Ilkay Gundogan because he was subbed off after just 25 minutes of Germany's friendly against France in Dortmund he suffered a really heavy collision there he was holding his lower back and he left the pitch in tears such was either the pain from that problem or the realisation that he had suffered a back injury and the alarm bells at that point really were ringing because earlier on in his career when he was actually playing for Dortmund, Gundogan did suffer with back problems. He had a really difficult time with it, missed a lot of football because of it and that would have been the absolute worst nightmare on this international break but the good news is right now and the huge, huge relief is it seems as though that was mainly an impact injury. It was a very, very heavy knock that he suffered a painful one. He was subbed off there mainly as a precaution and there have been a few more tests done this morning, initial tests there on this injury that seem to suggest right now there is nothing serious with Gundogan. He's not going to be a big problem for Barca and we are going to do more tests on him. There'll be plenty more done and everything will be checked of course but the signs right now much much more positive and hopefully 
hopefully right now we are thinking that Gundogan may be fine, ready for the return from international break, which would be a massive relief. But indeed, guys, we move now from one ex-Dortmund man to another, because let's go from Gundogan to Erling Haaland, because I have received a lot of questions over the past few days about Erling Haaland and these Barca links that, again, are resurfacing. This is something that we're just going to address here on the channel, because Graham Bailey reports there that Barca are already positioning themselves and have been now for quite some time to be in the race for Erling Haaland come 2025, when he will apparently there have a release clause in his Man City deal of £175 million. Euros. So not much then, only the casual 175 million will pay that up immediately, bring him in. But to be fair to Graham Bailey, he does report on a lot of transfer news there surrounding the Manchester clubs, both City and United. He does have credibility and obviously right now this is a report that's quite a long time away. A lot can change here between now and 2025 but apparently Barca are going to be in the race for Haaland. And honestly guys, what do you make of that right now? Because the feeling is I think with Erling Haaland Holland in the Premier League. I think once he's broken every single Premier League record, there is a feeling that at some stage he will want to move on from Man City. I don't think he's going to stay there forever. I think there will come a time where he wants to make that next big step in his career. Maybe it will be to one of the big two in Spain. We know that also Real Madrid would be interested in Holland too. And we also know, don't forget guys, that Juan Laporta is, and always has been, a massive fan of the player. He desperately tried to put us in the race back in 2022 when Haaland was leaving Dortmund. Back then, in terms of wages, we simply couldn't do it. It wasn't so much about the transfer fee, but given where our wage bill was back then, we simply could not accommodate Erling Haaland. And of course, since then, we've significantly lowered our spending on wages. We have improved our financial state as a club. We are getting back to the kind of levels that we need to be. And don't forget that by 2025, we should be nicely moved back in then to the new camp now. And hopefully all of those new revenue streams will have opened up for us, so things may be looking up by then. And according to Graham Bailey, Barca basically see Erling Haaland as the absolute perfect long-term replacement for Robert Lewandowski. And I do think the timing on that as well right now is quite interesting, because over the past few days, we have been starting to hear lots and lots of reports in the Catalan media, again talking about Lewandowski's long-term future, because although when he signed here, he did sign a four-year deal at the club until 2026, it has been reported this week that if Lewandowski next season were to play less than 55% of the games for Barca, apparently Barca would hold the option to terminate Lewandowski's contract at the end of the 24 to 25 season. So basically there, they would have the option if he plays less than 55% of the games to end his stay at the club one year earlier than planned. But even with all of that said... Do you think we should be in the race for Erling Haaland? You know, first of all, do you think that we will be? And do you think that we should be? Because no matter what, it is still going to cost a huge amount of money. This would be an absolutely enormous package here, not only in terms of that huge transfer fee, the big release clause, but also colossal wages. And I'm talking here about completely smashing our wage structure to pieces. That is what it would take to get Haaland. Because at this point, guys, I've got to be honest, that I'm sure you've all been screaming it at the screen now for probably the past few minutes minutes, but I would just like to mention the name of Vitor Roque, because we cannot forget about this young man. You know, we're talking about Haaland here, we're talking about 2025, but we've already paid out pretty big money to bring in this young man, this young number nine. He's a really exciting player, he's immensely talented, and of course he's got to come in and prove himself, but we want to give him absolutely every opportunity to do that, and that is why right now I would much rather personally be really excited for Roque, to put a lot of faith in him, to put a lot of trust in him, and really tried to give him the foundations to succeed at this club in many years to come, rather than right now thinking about what might happen in years to come, in 2025, the money that we could spend, the money that we will spend. Let's focus right now on an exciting young player that we have. Lewandowski, of course, is here right now. Roque hopefully arriving in January. And let's see what he can do, first of all, in Barca Colours. He is our priority. But do let me know, guys, in the comments down below, on the 
those Erling Haaland links on whether we should be in the race for him. Would you like to see him at Barca? Would you pay the big money to bring him in? And do let me know as well all the other topics that we have discussed there from the Rolling Stones to the international break. I will see all of you very soon indeed. Thank you indeed here for tuning in and for all of your great support. I'll be back very soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Oh.